Dr. Ben Spencer. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'd like to join uh, uh, what members have said across the House in paying tribute to the member for Swansea East for bringing forward this very important debate today uh, and the campaign that she's been running. Now, I want to start by saying, in a sense, I've had a bit of a different experience. Obviously, I haven't been through the menopause, but what I have done is, as a doctor working in mental health, I've looked after several women who have come to me where their depression was misdiagnosed as the menopause. So I've sort of seen it from, from the other way around, and I, I completely get the point that's been made, uh, I think, across the House by several members that... Um, understanding and, and recognition um, in this area by clinicians is something that people have lots of concerns about uh, and that needs to be improved. And I think one thing I've sort of heard really taking notice of is just, just the strength of feeling around that. And I think that's something that the medical profession needs to think about. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to make some, well, I probably should make some declarations, which is I, I'm still a member of the medical profession, I'm a member of the Royal College of Physicians and also Psychiatrists. But um, as um, I would say if I was a member of stage, SAGE, I am here, of course, speaking in a personal capacity today. Um, but I, what, what I just wanted to just, just talk about one of the stats that was put out, which was about the, the 41% of medical schools that don't um, have formal training in menopause. And I, I found that actually astounding. I, I had formal training in menopause when I went for medical school. And I think it's just worth just picking that a little bit, because um, I, I had a look in the briefing in terms of where that comes from. And... It isn't that the, my, my reading of it isn't that, that student doctors and GPs aren't getting training. They are getting training. They're getting training in terms of vocational training from people who are teaching them senior doctors on placements. It's that some of these schools don't have formal modules in terms of didactic sit-down teaching on it. So I think we need to be a little bit careful when we're saying that there isn't training from the menopause and need to dig in a little bit. And I think the reason why that's important and look, as I say, I totally get and, and agree with the, the sentiment that you know, it, it needs to be improved and needs to be better recognition. But I think we just need to be a bit careful in terms of making diktats for what the profession does in terms of how they approach their training programmes. Because if you carve it off for one disorder, the question is, well, what about other things? You know, what about, and, and eventually, the strength of the argument starts to diminish because you have all different campaign groups saying, well, actually, this needs to be separately cut out, and this needs to be separately cut out, and this needs to be separately cut out. Uh, yes, of course. I just say 51% of the population. That's a huge amount of people that are not being, uh, getting appropriate care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, and, and thank you for the intervention and, and pointing that out, but I would argue that it's maybe not 51% of the population who ha are in a situation when they need to have that care and support. So, although 51% of the population will go through the menopause, I think it's different to say that 51% of the population will therefore need medical intervention, medical discussions around it. Um, but, but like I say, you know, I, I, I don't particularly want to get into um, a, a, a deep debate in this. I'm just, just saying, I, I wonder whether we could ask the profession what they think they can do better in terms of improving things, rather than us sort of top-down saying on that. And, you know, of course, I would say this, I'm a doctor, yada, 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 you know, declarations, etc. But I, I just wanted just to say, maybe, I just wonder what the profession says in terms of in response to the campaign that you're doing about how they can improve things and whether um, we could hear, hear a bit more about that. Um, my, my final point is just to... In a sense, actually, I find the fact that we're having this debate today, and we have to have this debate, uh, deeply depressing... I think it's a wider indictment of the problems that we have in society about the role of women and the position of women in society. We've got the Equality Act, you know, we've got some, lots of legislation and statutes, but what we've heard is actually, when it comes to cultures and attitudes, it's just not there. And I, I think there, there really needs to be a step change. And, you know, the events of the past year, when we've seen things about sexual harassment, we've seen, you know, in my constituency, I, I have loads of constituents who come to me and tell me about the disrespect that's put forward to women. Uh, and, I, you know, I've uh, heard the points of the, the member in terms of... Um, I, well, I, sorry, I, I, just, I just find it appalling, quite frankly, that women's health has been left behind. Um, that I, I think we need to think very carefully about what we can do as leaders of our communities and society in terms of changing around and improving the respect for girls and women 
uh, and the position of women's Romanian society. On that note, I just want to just absolutely pay tribute to the member of Swansea East for bringing this debate forward uh, and the campaign that she's running.